for joining us because this is our 10th anniversary Legends Award reception. Can you believe that? 10 years. The Women's Foundation, Foundation for a Greater Memphis has served as a leader in philanthropy for more than 24 years and has served as a backbone organization in our community empowering women to empower women. Tonight, you are in for an amazing journey as we pay homage to four trailblazers who have illuminated women's leadership, who model diversity, and who have transformed the lives of thousands in Memphis and beyond. First, I want to give a special greeting to all of our past Legends Award honorees, their artists, and their writers. So if past Legend Award honorees are in the building, please stand and let us salute you. All the honorees.
but we would like to extend our deepest appreciation. So please salute Susan Stevenson and the Independent Bank as our visionary sponsors. Our legendary sponsors for tonight's event is KGB Technologies LLC. Where are you? I saw them right in here. KBG. Thank you for being our visionaries, our legendary sponsors for tonight's event. <laughs> Dr. Tishwani, thank you for also being a legendary sponsor of tonight's event. And also, the Friends of the Women's Foundation are also legendary sponsors for tonight's event. would 
would allow these women to inspire other women 365 days a year, not just during the week of the event. So the pieces unveiled tonight will be displayed at the 2019 Annual Tribute Luncheon, and from here, they will tour throughout Memphis and various places. We are proud to share that, including tonight's honorees. There are 73 women recognized in the Hall of Legends, which is visited by thousands of people of all ages and backgrounds annually. This is important to us at Baptist, like the Women's Foundation for a Greater Memphis, we strongly believe in the physical, mental, and emotional security of all families in our community. And we believe that the heart of the family is the woman. That's one, yes. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons that we created Baptist Memorial Hospital for Women the first and only freestanding women's hospital in this area. We know that the women's health affects the entire family, and a healthy family is a working family. So by empowering and strengthening women, we can have a greater impact, not only on families' health, but also on their financial future and security. So on behalf of Baptist, and the many women and families that we serve, we say thank you to the Women's Foundation for Greater Memphis for this wonderful program. Also, thank you to the women recognized over the past decade for their lifetime contributions and making Memphis and beyond a better place. Here is to another 10 years. Hi, thank you so much, Anne Marie. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. I'm Denise Carpenter, and I'm delighted to co chair the 2019 Legends Award reception. I've been on the board of the Women's Foundation since 2013, and I have been, it has been a pleasure to work with such dedicated, dynamic, and committed directors, all women working to end poverty in the city of Memphis, my hometown. Good evening, I'm Dr. Marcia Bowden, and I'm honored to co-chair with my partner in crime. We've been doing this now for two years, and I've been on the Women's Foundation Board since 20, 2008. It has been an honor to see the incredible women and the work that they've done, uplifting the work of other women, and supporting the lives of women and children, one family at a time. We are honored to be serving as co-chairs in the 2019 Legends Award reception. Part of our mission as an organization is fostering leadership among women, which fits well with our theme this year, Empowered Women, Empower Women. When you help a woman, you help a family, and you change the economic viability of an entire community. We created the Legends Award in 2009 to recognize women whose work embodies the mission of the Women's Foundation and strengthen women's leadership. By creating a collaborative process between the honorees, the artist, and a writer, we recognize and highlight women who continue to make our community stronger by their contributions. Over the past decade, we have honored 73 incredible women through the Legends Award. And Legends is the word. Their stories are humbling, and you've heard a lot of them in the past years. This evening, we salute four other legendary women, their life's work, and unveil the masterful artwork and prose created in dedication to each of them. Once again, I would like to thank our presenting sponsor for the last 10 years, Baptist Memorial Healthcare. For all, your, all you have done for us, we appreciate it. Because of your support, you have helped to make this unique experience highlighting the accomplishments of legendary women in our community. Let's begin the evening by taking a moment to learn more about the Women's Foundation.
Corporation for Greater Memphis, Vision 2020 Strategic Plan, and the Legends Award. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and by searching for the Women's Foundation for Greater Memphis. Thank you again to all of our legends, honorees, artists, writers, past and present, their families, and to all of you for attending. I would also like to give a special thanks to Ursula Madden for narrating the videos you saw, and uh, with, for, to, to uh, Irma Elsie for producing those videos. And now, and now what you all have been waiting for. I have the privilege of presenting the first of our two honorees in the category of 2019 Catalyst Award, Reverend Cheryl J. Cheryl's writer, Latrivia Welsh, states that Cheryl's warm energy and presence is simply inspirational. Join me as we take a closer look at the life and work of Reverend Cheryl J. Beard. Well, it's hard to follow the video uh, and keep it together, but I promised my friends I would try to be a big girl today. Good evening. I did write my comments. I will read them so I can stay within the time limit and hopefully say the things that were on my heart and are on my heart to say. Whenever and wherever I stand, I never stand alone. Uh, and so first, all praise, honor, and glory to the God of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to the ancestors, on whose shoulders I stand, and to that great cloud of witnesses, both those who have preceded me and those who remain. Certainly, that includes my late parents and the late Reverend Dr. K.T. Wayne. And to all of the ones who have inspired me, supported me, labored with me, and have allowed me to serve them. I honor their presence in my life, including my Memphis friends who are here with me on this evening. You are my family, and since I have no blood relatives in uh, Memphis, you are certainly uh, family to me. So thank you a thousand times. I love you truly. The Women's Foundation for a Greater Memphis is a treasure in our community. Certainly your work alone sets you apart as a jewel in Memphis's crown. Yet, that you would also choose to not only serve, but to pay tribute to women in such a beautiful way is simply awesome. To the staff, Board of Directors and Legends Committee of the Women's Foundation. And to Baptist, your presenting sponsor, I deeply appreciate this honor uh, and this opportunity. It is my great delight to be in the company of such phenomenal women as my fellow honorees and the women who were honored previously. Your assignments of my artist and writer, Brooke and Latrivia, were spot on. Our spirits connected immediately, and we would probably still be talking if we didn't have deadlines and other responsibilities. To my nominator, Dr. Marita Michelle Webb Taylor, yes, all of your names, I'm still saying, wow, this is absolutely the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous. Extremely grateful that you thought of me. So bless you. 
all of this is a bit uncomfortable uh, for me as I'm not a girl who enjoys the spotlight. I'm, I'm more of a producer, director, behind the scenes type. Uh, so I, I hope my words convey my sincere appreciation. It means a great deal to me uh, to receive honor from an organization of fellow women, one whose mission focus aligns with my life's work. Number one, being philanthropy. As I, raised, I was raised by parents who believed in giving back to their community. I followed their example and even had the blessing of leading, leading an organization that also gave significantly to the work of youth development in Memphis. Actually, my boss is the greatest giver of all time and eternity. He sort of expects that his staff would do likewise. Number two, leadership. I believe that the true standard for leadership is to build power in other people. I am most fulfilled when I am operating in that realm. My mother would always say, women have the power. I didn't always understand what she meant. Oh, but uh, I have come to know that women make the difference in the world. And when we need great things happen. Amen. Hashtag not on women empower women. <laughs> and number three, collaboration. One of my personal core operational values is collaboration over silos. An African proverb that has been a mantra for me for almost 20 years is, when spider webs unite, they can tie up a lion. Mm. I don't have time to explain, but just look at all that has been accomplished by the Women's Foundation of Greater Memphis over the last 25 years by women working together in Memphis. Lastly, the Women's Foundation and I share a love Memphis. Augusta, Georgia holds my family legacy, which I try to maintain coming generations. Nashville, Tennessee, three, these are the three cities I've lived in. Augusta, Nashville, Tennessee, which by the way is called Music City because of my beloved university, Fisk University. Don't get it twisted. Not because of country music, it's because of Fisk University. Look it up. <laughs> Fisk University, uh, being in Nashville, uh, holds the defining time and shaping my destiny. But Memphis, God's city, the place where I grew into my calling and passions, where I have spent all of my adult life to this point holds my heart. Memphis will always be home to me. And like the Women's Foundation for Greater Memphis, I shall continue to seek the shalom, the peace, the prosperity and wholeness of this city, and advocate for the welfare of its citizens. God bless you and thank you.
for the board who provides great leadership, the donors whose generosity keeps the lights on, and yes, those special <laughs> friends who nominated the recipients of tonight's award, that would be me and the other three. For our artist, Jill, uh, for our writer over there behind the sunshine, Shirley, thank you all. I've read that gratitude improves our health. It improves our relationships, emotions, personality, even careers. A recent study showed that being grateful helps lower stress, improve friendships and decision making. It causes us to be more spiritual, less envious or self-centered, and makes us feel better, even sleep better. Plus, we're more optimistic, have happier memories and healthier marriages. Thus, sharing gratitude is what we're doing here tonight. So, my first is the gratitude for living in a country where women can own and inherit property. Last year, I was a delegate to the United Nations Women's Conference about this time of year, and the most shocking thing I learned is how many countries in this world do not allow women to inherit. And if you are married, you don't even inherit your husband's his brother would inherit instead. And if you get along with the brother, you're in luck. And if you don't, you can be on the street. It never occurred to me that the world could be like that. We live in a country where we can drive cars, buy cars, sell cars, have more than one car. We go to universities. We become ministers, and we have careers. I have gratitude that in 2020, we will celebrate 100 years of women, most women, in America being able to vote. <laughs> Shout out to the 19th Amendment. Gratitude that we live in a society where women's health is so advanced. And thank you, Dr. Tejwani and Mary Armour, that women are able to receive medical care and postpartum care and prenatal care, thus lowering maternal mortality and providing women a life free from chronic gynecological problems from which women have suffered from time and more. And gratitude for the era in which we live, where for the first time in the history of the world, women can control and determine when they are ready to become pregnant. And gratitude that thanks so many supporters in Memphis, Tennessee, that any woman in Memphis and most of Tennessee completely can get for free the most effective, and it's also the most expensive, contraception upon request and also have it removed when she is ready and returned to fertility. Now, almost last, that we live in Memphis, the most charitable city in the United States. And last, and most important, I'm eternally grateful for my husband and son and good friend Donald who are here tonight with me. Thank you for your limitless love and support, for emptying the dishwasher, always taking out the trash, and for this and much, much more, I am grateful. Thank you all. Our next honor tonight, receiving the 2019 Legends Innovation Award, is Mary Armour. Mary's artist, Brenda Wiseman, describes Mary as a powerhouse who has an eternal connection to the Bader Children's Hospital. Mary's writer, Faith Morris, describes Mary as a motiv motivator for women, parents, children, and the community. Now, a closer look at Mary Armour. Thank you all so very much. I 
want to thank the Women's Foundation for this incredible event in recognizing women and supporting women and their families and children in Memphis and around our city so well. You have uh, humbled me and honored me greatly. So to my friend Ruby Bright and to Mary McDaniel, the chair, thank you very much for your leadership in this. I truly appreciate it. To my many friends uh, from Lamonter, my women friends that are here are absolutely the best part of my life and the absolute best part of my 12-year career at Lamonter. And I'm so grateful for you. And for the people, the women who have also won this award tonight, I say congratulations to you and the women that came before me standing at this podium. What a great legacy you all have created for women here. And the Women's Foundation actually gave me two new good friends through this event, and that is Faith and Brenda. They have become good friends, and I am so humbled and honored by their representation of me. Uh, they said things and learned things about me that I probably didn't even know about myself. So I'm really grateful for them, and I think I got the best team of everybody. I just want to um, uh, remind you that uh, women who try to be equal to men probably lack ambition. And that is... Um, <laughs> and that could have been my mother saying it, but I also think it's all of the people in the Women's Foundation and the legends that have been here before me. I want you to remember that every woman, every girl that's born has the potential to do something great in the world. Women have some special gifts that we should all recognize and remember. And they are thinking great thoughts. And they are feeling great feelings and doing great deeds. Women are sort of known for their nurturing and caring skills. And I hope that's what I've brought to the care of children in Memphis and throughout my career. So I think it's so important that organizations like this exist and women stand up to support and care for one another because the ability for women to take leadership as we've seen now in our nation and across this country, more and more women stepping up to the stage and being in charge and in control really is helping change the dynamic of caring and nurturing in our country. I hope we see many more women in politics, many more women in leadership, many more women out there speaking out for the rights and good causes that women and children need. It has been my sincere privilege and honor to serve as the President and CEO of the Modern Children's Hospital for 12 years. I hope you're proud of this city's children's hospital because I sure am.
One is celebration of life. Because we wear celebration, during celebrations we wear white during weddings, Easter holidays, children and flower girls. Peace and joy in the world is also white. The last part of it is grief. In our culture, we wear white as a sign of mourning and grief. And this is what I'm going to talk about in the women's plight in this culture and community, even at this stage. My involvement in the Women's Foundation is rooted in the deep belief, no matter how far women have come in the last few decades, there is always more work to do, and we are the ones to do it. My experience, my experience from growing up in India, emigrating to Memphis, Tennessee, USA, at the height of the civil rights era, to practicing medicine as the business owner in this city, especially as an OBGYN, has only hardened this belief. I stand on the shoulders of my mother. She said, have no fear. In 1940, she was a pre-med student in India, but as most women her age in that time, Around the world, the option to work and continue that path after marriage did not exist. As we settled into a new life as refugees after India's independence in 1947, my father had evolved in these matters and along with my mother encouraged all the women in the family to become professionals, teachers, lawyers and doctors. My desire to go to college and become a doctor was supported in that time, unlike the other unfortunate female classmates I had. At age 16, in 1958, while in college, a male classmate said to me, if you go to medical school, you are taking away a place from a man, his livelihood to support his family. Sounds familiar to anybody here? I said, I may have to support my family too. Fast forward 10 years. 1968, a little over 50 years ago, I emigrated to the United States and to Memphis. After getting married, there was no choice. It was what we did as women, move where our husbands had their jobs at that time. Making a new life in a new country that hadn't reconciled its own unequal treatment of its people when it came to gender or race. In the wake of Martin Luther King's assassination, in my hometown, in my new hometown, I found myself one of the only few female physicians, seven to be exact, and one of two doctors of color. One was a male surgeon, and I was the second one. His name was Dr. Edward Reed. Oh, Dr. Reed. My first job interview, what do you think was I supposed to say? The only question I was ever asked was what was I going to wear to work? I had only been in Memphis three weeks at that time. I had never spoken to a white man in my life before. And I was intimidated, worried about what to say when I needed the job. But without thinking, all I said was, would you ask a man that question? Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, I was very sorry for the interview. <laughs> it was a reminder for me and for all of us in our work at the foundation that our issues as women and girls united us in shared experiences, and women of color often lag far behind and have added challenges. Women have always been guardians of wisdom and humanity, which in the past have made them natural, but oftentimes secret, unappreciated leaders. The time is far past for women to lead openly, without defensiveness, and without apologies. So much 
culture has changed and moved forward, but because of centuries of inequity, we still are at a place outside of rules like this one. Women vanish in thin air. These are the words of authors Lynn Griffin and Kelly McCain, who wrote the book, The Book of Women. Most of us should read that. It covers about 300 women that we don't remember. We have come a long way, but at every step forward, others push us back two steps. It's easy to forgive my class college mate and for taking away a job from a man. It was a different time, but it hasn't changed a whole lot. Just two weeks ago, literally two weeks ago Wednesday, a male colleague of mine said to me, women are taking away spots from men and taking over everything. I had to set the record straight. And we said, we are still trying to catch up to what was denied us for such a long time in the first place. We are only taking what should have been ours a long time ago. This was just two weeks ago. In the field of medicine, I want you all to know one little truth. Women's health is the most underfunded entity in this country. And we need to do something about it. We also should not forget that we go to male or female doctors. Female patients are not listened to carefully. They are interrupted easily and are brushed aside. So much work we do at the Women's Foundation is to elevate women's voices so the girls see, see themselves and the entire world full of opportunities. Yeah. My two daughters grew up seeing me as one of the few women and the few women of color owning their own medical practice and practicing medicine. When will the next generation see equal numbers in this? We still seeing firsts. I am still waiting to see the first female president in our country. Thompson and all of our volunteers. Would you join me in just giving them a round of applause? 